Hi, let's chat about my chosen film stock to shoot the summer of 2022 in, shall we? I know it's September, summer is over, but if you've been following along this channel for a while now, then you must have already noticed how late we can get in here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Bon and welcome to my little space online where I talk about my visual arts shenanigans, mostly film photography in particular, so please like and subscribe so I feel validated. Yes, I need that external validation because my parents didn't hug me enough when I was growing up. Kidding. <laughs> but yeah, back to the topic. My first film of choice to photograph the summer of 2022 in is Coda Color VR1. <clears throat> Sorry. Lomography Color Negative 100. As its name suggests, it's a slow speed film, so it's best for taking photos in sunny conditions. If you're unfamiliar with what film ISO speeds mean, think about it this way. The ISO number refers to how sensitive a film stock is to light. Low ISOs like 50, 100, and to some extent 200 ISO films are less sensitive to light, meaning to get a proper exposure, you need to expose them to a lot more light. Hence, they're best to shoot in sunny conditions. Higher ISOs like 400 and 800 are more sensitive to light, so they can handle dimmer scenes like indoors or cloudy days, sunsets, etc. They're generally more versatile than lower speed films. However, lower speed films are generally cheaper than higher speed films, and Lomo 100 is the cheapest of the Lomography color negative film stocks, with Lomo 400 and 800 being the other two. And with today's film prices, well, we all know we can use some cheaper alternatives. So yeah, because I live in Toronto, Canada, where summer days are usually long and sunny for the most part, uh, I thought it's best to switch over to lower speed ISO films during the summer. Back in June, I went to see the Toronto Islands with my friends a couple of times, and in both cases, I brought some rolls of Lomography Color Negative 100 with me to document some memories. The Toronto Islands are a set of islands off the coast of Toronto in Lake Ontario, accessible via ferry and water taxis. There's a residential area in the eastern side of the islands, but the Toronto Islands are mostly made out of parks and beaches, with one beach being a clothing optional beach. Anyways, it's probably one of my favorite summer spots around Toronto, so definitely give it a visit if you're ever around.
As you can see from these photos, Lomo 100 is quite a vibrant film. Similar to its higher ISO siblings, its noticeable contrast and saturated colors make for photos that pop right off the bat. I also think that it has a lovely color profile. It's not as warm as Kodak Gold, but also not as magenta as Kodak Actor 100. Both of which are awesome film stocks, by the way. It's a good in-between. Like Kodak Actor 100, Lomo 100 also has fine, subtle grain, which means it can resolve a great amount of detail when using sharper lenses. Actor surely beats it when it comes to dynamic range, though. In simplified terms, Actar will get you more details in the shadows compared to Lomo 100, but Lomo 100 is cheaper. So yeah, if you're like me and you prefer vibrant colors to muted tones, then you'll probably enjoy this film stock as well. By the way, the photos that I've been showing so far were all taken with a 35mm version of the film, but Lomo 100 is also available in 120 medium format film. And here are some older photos that I took in that format. And that brings me to the end of this video. Please like and share if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe and check out my other film photography content while you're at it. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next one. Cheers.